Good evening and welcome to the July 6th, 2021 session of Bedford City Council for a regular meeting. And uh, would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, call the roll, please. Ansbury? Here. Saunders? Here. Kochi? Here. Spinks? Here. Davis? Here. Blue Hardy? Here. 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 Uh, Council, you have the minutes of the special work session of April 26, 2021. Any corrections? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance by Spinks, second by Janutis? Burke, call the roll, please. Yes, Burry? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Thanks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Nizia? Yes. And you have the minutes of the work session of June 7th, 2021. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance by Mizak, second by Asbury? Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Abstain. Kochi? <coughs> yes. Thanks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. And you have the minutes of the public hearing of June 7th, 2021. Corrections to that. Seeing none, motion for acceptance by Blue Hardy, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Yesbury? Yes. Saunders? Abstain. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Yes. And you have the minutes of the regular meeting of June 7th, 2021. Any corrections to that? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance? Mizak? And seconded by Asbury. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Abstain. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. And now, uh, one of my biggest pleasures is swearing in a new officer. And uh, it's always a good thing when we add some fresh young blood to the departments and, and uh, some new perspective. And this is especially rewarding because now we will have our first female police officer. If you would. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter and Laws of the City of Bedford, Ohio. And the Charter and Laws of the City of Bedford, Ohio. And faithfully. And faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of the position. Discharge the duties of the position. A police officer of the city of Bedford, Ohio. A police officer in the city of Ohio. So help me guys. So help me guys. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll have the chief uh, do the badge there with her. <laughs> Congratulations. And uh, Chief, would you like to say a couple words? Okay. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, 
such. As soon as it quiets down a little bit, and then we'll move on here. We have no old business, so we will get to reports. Um, before we do that, I'm take the prerogative that I'm going to go first this time. <laughs> Usually, I'm at the end, and uh, everything's said. Uh, we had a great little Fourth of July parade uh, on Saturday, on the third. Uh, we had a motorcade through town, and I think we hit 85, 90 percent of the streets in town, uh, except for some of the, the dead ends where we couldn't turn around. Um, and it was nice. It was nice. It certainly wasn't the normal Fourth of July parade we have uh, between here and Bedford Heights. Um, but when Bedford Heights declined to have the parade again this year, so we did our, our little motorcade, and, and it was good. Uh, we saw a lot of happy, smiling faces and threw out a bunch of candy. And, uh, not only were the kids happy to get the candy, but I think the adults were more happy that we, <laughs> we threw them candy, too. Uh, so it was a great thing just to go through and a little display of our pre appreciation as council to our uh, residents out there that we, we drove around town and tried to say hi to as many people as we could. Uh, so that, that was kind of a neat thing. Uh, the other thing I want to mention in, is, uh, if you haven't done it yet, the Dream Walkers, I don't know if you've seen this, it's the immersive play that's going on right here in Bedford. Uh, it's an interactive play. You actually get to uh, interact with the actors and ask questions and trying to figure out who, who done it. And it's, it's just so well done, and it, it's done in our city. This is, I think, the third installment of this uh, Shadow of the Run series they're doing. And uh, it's, it's really pretty neat. And we are the only place between New York and Chicago that is doing this type of play called Immersive Theater, uh, which is a real, I think, honor for our, our town to have this, this type of uh, Hollywood production right here in town and, and 
certified not certified actors that belong to a Screen Actors Guild. I mean, some professional people doing these uh, events, and and I know we uh, we went there to, um, last weekend, and and we had we had a ball. And uh, what was really neat is there was a lot of people there that I didn't recognize, which means people were coming from other places to come <coughs> here to see this. And as we were leaving. Uh, it ended up in uh, Cernas. He's helped sponsor the event, and the last two people that finished the uh, the play, the guy was from Coshocton, and his date was from out of state, and they came up here for that play. So it's just really, really a neat thing, and they are playing one more weekend, so you can go online uh, to shadowoftherun.com. And get all the information. Uh, it's just a really, really neat thing to have something like that right here in town. And uh, and I hope they have some more productions. And the, the neat thing is, one of the producers lives here in Bedford. That's they were looking all around Cleveland where they wanted to do it. And he says, No, no, no. They come out to my town and do it. It's a pretty cool town. And they did, and and they loved it. And uh, we had a great time. So I'm giving them that plug and. Please, if you can go see it, go see it. It's just something unique to do the uh, that that type of thing. And now that I got mine out of the way, we'll start with our city manager, Mike Mallis. Thank you, Mayor. A couple items uh, get ahead because we're going to mention some of them in the legislation this evening. Um, but I wanted to mention that um, we are, uh, as you those that have seen in the previous meetings. Uh, Cuyahoga County is committed to moving forward with Union Street this year, um, which is a good thing. We've been trying to get that project done for, for um, actually since 2014. Um, one of the things, there was a small portion of, the do, uh, of that project that was going to come out of the city's um, budget for, uh, to extend it all the way to go from Broadway to Broadway instead of just Broadway to Northfield. We wanted the entire street. Um, but there also needed to be some substantial sewer repairs that were done that needed to get done. So we were going to be um, investing about three hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars. The good news is last week we applied for um, funding through issue two, which is state funding for for large capital projects, and we were we were approved. So we are going to get some fu some funding uh, for the city's portion of Union Street, and there'll be some legislation later on acknowledging that. Um, but what that does is it frees up some uh, additional money for some roads. And we're going to be asking council later tonight to um, reallocate some of those funds uh, to include a street that was uh, originally bid as an alternate during the uh, road program, um, and that was Nordham. Uh, we weren't sure if we'd have the money to do so, but our staff that really worked hard to get this funding through issue two to free up the money is going to allow us to hopefully do that. Um, if if um, if we're able to, to to move forward with that legislation, so I I wanted to compliment the staff. There, there was a lot of hard work that went into uh, securing those dollars. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, regarding another project that we've talked about for for a few years, and that is uh, our connector project uh, that it, uh, includes uh, a bridge, reinstalling a bridge that would go over viaduct uh, the falls. And it would connect the pedestrian trail on Egbert Road um, to Willis, and then a, a pedestrian trail from Viaduct Park to the Commons. So in theory, people that are in town can take that path, and you can go right into the Metro Parks. Metro Parks, bikers and hikers that are coming down Egbert, they got a direct path right into town. Um, it's, a, it's a substantial project. It's a, a over a million dollars. We've been looking at a number of different grants to go after that. Um, one specific funding source is NOACA. Um, NOACA, it, it's very, uh, it, it is a long and complicated process um, because in order to get um, construction dollars, you first have to go through their planning phase. And uh, you know that they got to believe in the project. To be honest with you, they, they got to believe that this is a, a, a viable project um, that they're going to get behind, uh, provide funding for the planning, and then you go through that process. You can then be eligible for the construction dollars. 
And we found out last week, our staff member that put a lot of hard work into it, uh, the city was awarded an $80,000 planning grant for that project. So we're going to be starting that. Um, a lot of engineering, a lot of um, surveying work that we need to get done um, before we actually go for construction dollars. But it's a huge first step um, to seeing that a reality. So I wanted to obviously compliment Jen and our economic development department. Um, our police department, um, you know, for those of you that, uh, that are not aware, city council uh, supported um, and included in this year's budget uh, the purchase of body cameras and dash cams uh, for all officers, all vehicles. Um, the body cameras have been, uh, we initiated those um, about a month, month and a half ago. Um, and then last week they were installing all of the dash cams. Uh, so those are uh, the departments implemented, implemented with all of that. Uh, I think it's good for, for the public. I think it's good for the department. Um, and thank you to council for, uh, for approving that during the budget process. Uh, I want to give a, a quick mention. A um, couple weeks, July 14th, is going to be uh, our uh, Bedford Parks and Recreation Department is going to be putting together a summer concert series. Um, down on the commons on Wednesdays. There's going to be two every month, uh, two in July, two in August, two in September. Um, first one is July 14th, and we're having uh, Risk Factor is the band that's going to be down there. And there's also going to be a Smoke and Rock and Roll food truck uh, also present. So if you're looking for a night to, to come listen to some music, uh, stop down there. Uh, we are also looking at implementing some movie nights throughout the summer as well. Uh, most likely on a Friday evenings, but as, as details uh, get ironed out, um, we'll share that. Please follow the department in the city on social media and, and our um, website for those updates. Um, also, pool, uh, we, we were able to extend our pool hours uh, as well as extending our um, Learn to Swim program. If you're looking for that information, please visit our website um, for the additional uh, information. The city gave the Cuyahoga County Land Bank the notice to proceed to tear down 180 West Grace. Uh, that was an abandoned property that the city uh, worked to acquire at no cost, and our intention obviously is to demolish that. So um, that is being funded through a grant that we received, and Cuyahoga County is going to tear that home down. And lastly, I just want to touch on, and, and there'll be some legislation again later this evening, um, but for the last few months, we've had some, some significant issues with the uh, railroads, specifically Norfolk Southern Railroads, um, stopping at the tracks. Um, we have been working uh, tirelessly to try to get this resolved. Um, spoken to a number of different individuals through Norfolk Southern, dispatching centers in Atlanta, in Michigan, the train master is a gentleman's title. Um, we're working through that. Unfortunately, it happened twice today. Um, we're aware of it. We know it's an issue. I just want to stress that we are we're doing everything we can to try to fix this. And you'll see some legislation uh, later this evening. Um, we had wished we, we were not looking going that route, but it, it's necessary. Uh, it's a concern. Um, and I just want uh, everyone to know that we're, we're, we're taking the steps needed to hopefully resolve this. End of report. Thank you. Law Director, John Montello. Thank you, Mayor. Just, uh, I really have no report. I just want to congratulate Savannah Selden and uh, Satara Williams to, to her nomination to the Planning Commission. And uh, other than that, uh, nice to see everybody. <laughs> Take care. Oh, oh, Mr. Hood, I didn't see him on the second page. I was going down the first page. <laughs> Mr. Hood as well. And Mr. Trezak and Ms. Spates. Yep. <laughs> Everybody, <A> lot congratulations. Of <laughs> Thank you. Finance Director, Mr. Gambosi. Uh, just to note this evening, we have Jennifer Holland with us today, our Assistant Finance Director. She's been working uh, closely with me on the ARPA funding and uh, what we're doing there to try to obtain our funds for future projects that are going to be available pretty soon. Uh, a couple items, the, uh, you know, uh, Civil Service Commission, Nancy's here today, uh, did a great job in regards to uh, putting together a test pretty quickly. We did different methods this time that seemed to work very well for us and uh, thank them for all their efforts uh, and time that we spent on that. 
Um, the Rotary Rib Burnoff is going to happen July 23rd to July 25th that weekend. We will have our event. We have all the signs starting to go up now. We have our banners going up, advertising going up all over. Uh, so please come join us and enjoy that um, evening with us and support our Rotary um, organization. Uh, we completed our audits recently with a couple of different firms, We're actually in working with the state auditor's office. We finished the audit. We finished, finished also our federal single audit uh, that had to be completed also. So all those funds that we received last year from federal dollars were audited as well as our regular audit of the city. So we had our auditors everywhere. Uh, and did very well. Very great results. Uh, the department did a fantastic job. And Jennifer, great assistance in that regards too. Uh, that's all I have for this evening, and I appreciate uh, all the efforts of the department. We'll have more in tax coming up, and uh, enjoy the summer. Thank you. Council, Mr. Asbury. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, I'd like to uh, congratulate Officer Selden. Uh, I had the great opportunity to work as auxiliary with Bedford Police Department for the last three years, and uh, they're really a great group of officers, and I know she's going to fit in very well, and I'm hoping she's happy in her new position. Congratulations. Uh, hopefully everybody had a safe and enjoyable Independence Day. Everybody still got all your digits. So <laughs> good there. Um, my arm is a little sore from throwing candy out the window for <laughs> three hours this way trying to drive. But we had a good time, and uh, I think the kids really enjoyed it. Um, Ellenwood. Mike, um, I know we were hoping that it would be finished off this week, but it looks like rain the rest of the week, so maybe... Yeah, the final course will probably, I mean, we're still hopeful, but if it's weather, it's, it'll probably be pushed out the next week. Okay, so yeah. hopefully we get that finished up and be nice and smooth for us. I uh, just want to announce some things that are going on downtown. Uh, we did have Bedford Downtown Alliance had our uh, first Friday, last Friday, July 2nd. Uh, big success. It was party in the USA. Everything, of course, was red, white, and blue themed. There were a lot of red, white, and blue prizes given away. Some nice baskets were given away. Um, Bet Falls Cafe uh, distributed 60 meals, so we had a really good time. Uh, the next one is Friday, August 6th, and the theme is Putt Around Downtown. So we're going to have a golf theme. We're going to have some little things for the kids, little putting greens. Stop down and see us Friday, August 6th, 6 to 8. Along with the Bedford Rotary um, event going on from the 23rd to the 25th, the Rip Burnoff, uh, there will be on the 24th, Christmas in July. So we know Cernus has their big to do every year with the phone coming off of the roof. <laughs> Bedford Downtown Alliance will have some things going on also. So it's going to be a busy weekend, uh, July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Come on down and have some fun. Um, January 17th, I think we've got a couple things going on on that day. Uh, first is the National Record Store Day, which we had back in June. Um, and what that is is the record stores, they have the releases from the artists and they all drop on the same day. Um, Final Grove had a big turnout and he's expecting a, an actually bigger turnout for this one. Hopefully maybe one of the news crews might come down and, and uh, show our city in a good light. Um, and also on the 17th, we're dedicating uh, Sammy's Bench. Yeah. So I know it's been a long time coming. Um, after Sammy passed away last year, Bedford Downtown Alliance with Heather Rhodes uh, put together a GoFundMe and purchased the bench in a nice stand pedestal with a plaque, and that's going to be dedicated on July 17th, Saturday morning at 10? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, that's it. And a report. Uh, Jeff, you said January 17th. I'm sorry, July <laughs> 17th. <laughs> 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 for Sammy. Good for yeah. temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Um, Mr. Saunders. At first off, I want to say the whole reason I was abstaining from all those minutes, uh, I wasn't here at the last meeting. I don't miss many meetings, but at the last minute, my son, my older son who's in the Navy, was able to get leave at the same time his now wife, who's also in the Navy, got leave. 
and they got married out in Mount Vernon, Washington State. Uh, it was a last minute thing where we got our flights and everybody flew out there, her family, my family, and ironically the ship actually docked the day of the wedding, so a few of the people from the ship, because they were both on the same ship, uh, Ralph Johnson, it's a destroyer, it's uh, probably the meanest destroyer in the Navy right now, so uh, it's one of those things where when you're in the military, it's last minute everything, so I had to take off and go to that, so that's why I wasn't here the last time. So subsequently, I abstained from all of the, the minutes from that date. Uh, the only real thing that I have right now are two things, and that is, I don't know if Mike's aware of the fact, but uh, on 4th of July, they were actually blowing fireworks off at Ellenwood. I would have thought that uh, we wouldn't have allowed city property to do that, although the house right next door to Ellenwood was blowing off regular full-size commercial fireworks also. I want to thank the police department for handling some of the situations with the fireworks. It was kind of hectic on the 4th of July itself. Uh, I don't know where these people are buying commercial grade fireworks, but uh, there were quite a few. Uh, ironically, on Nordham, which we're going to repave, happens to be one of the ones that had really big fireworks that you would see in a display shooting off. And you know, these houses are 50 feet apart from each other. There were sparks coming all the way on Logan, which is on my street, a full block away. So uh, these people have to realize that uh, it's dangerous blowing these off. That's why when we have cities that have displays and stuff, they are actually in areas that are remote enough so that it doesn't damage any surrounding properties or uh, cause incidents. Uh, now I know the state legislature is looking at actually making commercial grade fireworks legal, which sometimes you wonder what's going on in Columbus, but uh, that would be a big mistake. So. Uh, Hopefully we're over the worst of the fireworks right now. I know of several veterans that were having a problem because they have PTSD uh, and the fireworks weren't doing them any good, as well as a lot of people who had pets. Uh, I know my two dogs were buried under chairs during the whole 4th of July especially. So uh, it, it doesn't do well for some people. It, there's a time and a place for them, and the emphasis is on place, not in the middle of neighborhoods. So with that, uh, my other issue is something that, if you remember a few years ago, I voted against because I thought exactly what's happening over there was going to happen. But the old convent on Broadway has turned into a HUD apartment building. There's no manager there at all anymore. Uh, they're letting people in, they're 30, 40 years old. It's not an old age thing. It's low income, yes, but uh, we have a situation over there that the people who moved in thinking it was old age are planning on moving out because it has become exactly what I thought it might become is a hot apartment building. So uh, we need to look into the situation over there and uh, find out exactly what's going on because with uh, there's no manager over there anymore either. The place is running amok. There's garbage in the hallways. Uh, one of the residents who I think they finally evicted this weekend was a hoarder and the place was filled with trash. Uh, it was spilling out into the hallways there too, so uh, we have a situation over there that needs to be looked at, and I would hope that somehow we get to look at that and uh, correct that thing, because that was supposed to be our gem old age facility, and uh, it's turning out to be exactly what we didn't want, that was an apartment building. Uh, basically f for low income. So I uh, appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you.
Mrs. Mm. Spinks. Welcome back, everybody. Glad to be back. I reminded Mr. Fluharty to make sure he had pants on because we weren't real sure at some of the Zoom meetings. He had shorts on. <laughs> and I had to put my shoes on tonight. Um, big congratulations to our new officer. That is quite an honor. It's uh, very dear because I am the proud mother of an officer, not a, a female officer. But uh, that's really great for our city. Um, and like I said, the good thing about it was that she wasn't hired because she was a female. She was hired because she was very qualified. So that's always good. The parade was awesome. Um, I kind of, I hope we don't go back because I think it's so cool because we, I got to see parts. I've lived here 14 and a half years and been on council for eight, very involved in the city as soon as I moved here, but there was parts of our city that I had never seen. Me and Vic were talking about it, <clears throat> and boy, did we have a beautiful city. There's places that I had never been, and I was like mainly, you know, concentrated on the downtown area and Ward 1, but we have beautiful homes. Um, like I said, I hope I'm able to find these streets and go back. I'm pretty much with Mills and Wheels, I'm all over everywhere, but Bedford, I'm in Bedford Heights, I'm in Walton Hills and Oakwood and everything else. So some of these homes I haven't seen. So that was fun. And once again, I threw out my school supplies and little basketballs and stuff and, and uh, the goodies for the seniors. I even knew this year was soup mix. And boy, that was a big hit. <laughs> and I didn't hit anybody with it. <laughs> so that was good. Um, the Bedford Historical Society, this year what we're doing uh, due to COVID, um, we weren't able to have our strawberry festival so what we because all of our fundraisers have been just we haven't had anything in almost two years now because of that and so what we decided to do was we're going to combine some of the vendors which had paid for last year so what we're going to do is some of the strawberry vendors will have the food that's normally at the strawberry uh, festival I have that and the artisans, the artists from, um, and the entertainment from the celebration at the weekend of the Puka. So we're going to combine those two events, the September the 10th, 11th, and 12th. It's the second weekend, like normally, the celebration of art. And this year, instead of having, of course, the September, sometimes it can be warm, sometimes it can be cold. So instead of having, of course, there's not strawberries then. So what we're going to do is we're going to be having a strudel. We're going to have a strudel tent so in ice cream, so that's going to be one of our fundraiser, and we'll have craft beers this year instead of the draft beer. So and we'll have artists and artisans, so that's exciting. And Jeff, if the Downtown Alliance would like to get involved with that, we'd love to have y'all um, to do that. So um, now on to business, Mike. We had talked about it before, and I'm going to get you to kind of explain about it. Me and Vic have been talking about the, the speeding. It's been, I'm like a broken record. I've been complaining about it, you know, for, for years and years. And, of course, I see the majority of it living on Grand Boulevard, having a stop sign that I can count per day of people that don't stop at that stop sign. And, of course, my concern is I don't want to wait for an accident to happen. But it's not just Grand Boulevard. It's Willard. It's it's everywhere. It's all over the city. City. It's everywhere. It's all our side streets, even the small Archer. And I mean, that's a curvy road. They go flying down there. And my concern is, like I said, one of our kids getting, you know, hit. Dogs. Anybody getting hit. And I had compared it one time, saying, you know, well, Northfield, you go down to Northfield, you go by the casino, they're not going to get you really can't compare it to that because that's a straight shot. Here we've got all these side streets. So you can't, you know, compare to that. And I talked to Mike and I said, well, you know, when you go into um, Walton Hills, you know not to speed through there because they have the cameras and they check it. So I'm going to let Mike, we, we've talked about it, I'm going to let Mike touch on that, on why we uh, Well, a couple things. One, obviously it's something that, that you know, we take seriously, um, police department takes seriously. We, Chief and I have talked about some other um, other options that may be able to curb some of these things, especially on the cut through streets. Um, and hopefully I'll have some more information on what some other options may be in the, in the coming meetings. 
Um, you know, the one thing with it's difficult that I, I often say is it's tough to compare to like Northfield is, um, you know, Northfield's got, I mean, and again, I'm not trying to compare, but I am. I mean, it's really one main street through that town. I mean, we have, we don't have one main street. We have Broadway, Northfield, Columbus, Rockside. I mean, it, 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 it's much easier when you have one main drag to, to patrol that one main drag. Obviously, and you have to patrol side streets as well. Um, I'm not entirely versed on all the legal um, and, and the ramifications of the speed cameras, uh, but I, I, I do know some communities, um, you know, it was a big lawsuit um, with the state of Ohio. Those communities that put up the cameras, they won a lawsuit. The state of Ohio at one point came back and said, okay, you have the cameras, those cameras generate dollars. Um, you, we're going to cut back your local government funding because you've taken that route. Obviously, it's something, if that is indeed how it's still in place, I, again, I, I don't know all the, the, the ramifications of those suits that went on uh, between the communities in, in Columbus. Um, and yes, they, they would be a deterrent, but I would in no way, shape, or form advise counsel to make a decision that could ultimately result in us getting fun, funding cut from the state of Ohio. You know, at one point, our local government funding, um, I think at our peak, and I know Frank would correct me if I get this wrong, we might have been around seven, eight hundred thousand uh, dollars what we used to get. Um, that was cut um, down to mid 200, 280 maybe. It's as low as that. We're about in the 300. Yeah, it, at the lowest point, it was. You're, you're right, Frank. At the lowest, it was about 270, 280. It went up a little bit um, when Governor DeWine took office. Um, and again, I don't know all of the ramifications with the speed cameras in those communities, but I know there was discussions that if you have those cameras um, and you're generating income in that way, um, we're going to cut back funding in this way. Um, I would never advise council to, to do anything that could jeopardize that, that funding. I mean, we, we utilize that funding. It's very important to, to programs for our community. Um, not saying that those don't work as far as deterring. Um, obviously, I'm sure they do. I mean, listen, I got a ticket once from a speed camera. Um, it stunk. Uh, <laughs> but um, but we, you know, we know, that especially on some of the long cut through streets, we know it's a, it's a challenge. Um, and, and we're going to look at some ways that we can hopefully try to uh, curb that. Okay. Thank you for that short discussion. <laughs> um, Mike, another thing too, and, and again, a broken record, we put uh, um, signs up on both ends of uh, uh, Grand, the end nearest uh, center and the end nearest Broadway, and for no big trucks. Well, I counted four today come through filled up with truck, with the cars. So they're, they're, and it's no way that they cannot see these signs. So it's just, it's, it's, I feel like it's very disrespectful to our city um, for them to do that. They've got to see them. And I mean, it's just, it's, you know, our roads are from the last, uh, the flash flood we had, um, there's a reg regular large, a uh, uh, rather large hole um, down by the creek. So, um, they're not, at least they're not speeding because they're so big, but there's, yeah, the transporters are still coming through. So that's a problem. Um, I talked to you about that. And of course, we've got several streets that I turned into you that has holes. Grand, that hole, Grand Croft, Tudor, Willard, there's a bunch we discussed. The dead tree on Tudor in front of 100. And let's see what else I have. Oh, a big thank you before I get to some sad stuff. A big thank you to Cerna's Cafe for what all they do for our city. And um, of course, everybody knows that uh, a big love of mine and one of my favorite things to do is volunteer. And I was away from it for a little while due to my husband's sickness, um, was uh, Mills on Wheels. And Brett Holocaust has been so gracious to donate soup. And one Friday I got to deliver, and you would have thought you were giving those seniors a million dollars. And it was a bonus meal. They had their meal for the weekend, but that was a, a we delivered Monday through Friday. And so sometimes on the weekends it can get kind of tired of them not having something. So we're so, so lucky to have um, 
and I heard it's really good soup too. So um, I just want to publicly thank him. I thanked him in person when I went to the uh, immersion theater. That was really neat. But the um, as volunteers and um, everybody at Mills and Wells really appreciates that. Um, now for the sad news. Um, very dear friend and my neighbor, ever since I've been living there, and Bob's been there for about 20 years, my uh, neighbor, Tony Camera, who was a, um, worked at the high school, so she's a security guard. I'm going to try to get through this without crying, um, but don't hold me to it. Um, and just a big condolence to her husband, Doug. Um, she beat, four years ago, she beat um, stage four pancreatic cancer. But last year, cancer came back around her lungs and her heart. I never saw somebody that was so positive and just a fighter. She um, her, has one son, Zach, and my heart just goes out to Zach. He's her only child, and he they grew up here in, in Bedford. Like I said, she worked in high school. But she at least got to see her um, granddaughter. She has an eight-month-old granddaughter. And um, just what a wonderful neighbor. And through all of this, everybody knows my husband was diagnosed with cancer, came back after eight years. So they became what they called the Grand Boulevard Cancer Buddies. And while he was in the hospital, there she was going through all this, she would text me and she'd say, let me know when you get home, how's Bob doing? And here she is going through the chemo and going through all this and she was still concerned about somebody else so I would try to you know take something over or she had hear a peck on the back door and it'd be her bringing soup over for Bob or for me and always checking in let me know when you get home and we'll watch for you out the window and just it's it's a great loss we we share a backyard but we just shared so much more than that and his mother Miss Thompson Thomas Joe, Joe Thomas, I know her for I lived here. She was our nurse at Shaker Heights where I worked. And um, it's just a, a big empty spot right now. And just talking to her husband today, I spent time with her mother-in-law today. And it's just, me and Doug were talking about it. It's just being a caretaker is, is the hardest job you'll ever be given. And I'm so thankful for my friends and my constituents that have called and sent cards and checked and everything and I haven't missed a beat on doing my work check <laughs> even when my husband was in the hospital so my dear friends and there's a couple of them sitting in this room that I don't know what I've done without you and I love you guys and thank you to my residents in the report. Thank you. Mr. Janudis. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't know how to follow that exactly, Sandy. Just start crying. You'll be okay. So, I don't want to start crying, but I will say this, that <clears throat> it's nothing but, there's nothing better than having good neighbors. That makes all the difference in the world. Doggone it. And I want to welcome my new neighbor, Austin Reeds, here for the first uh, meeting. And I know it won't be his last because... Uh, a lot of times we um, imagine, well, how, how can we uh, revert residents to be citizens? You know, there's a lot of volunteering opportunities, but uh, I think in the case of uh, Austin here, he's already <laughs> has a, a good sense of citizenship, I could tell already, so in, in, in large part uh, in, in demonstrated by him being here. So. Welcome. And also, he, he moved into uh, the, the birthplace of someone very famous who's sitting here today, uh, just a few few seats away. Uh, it's my old house. Yeah. Where I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> the old house, yeah, yeah. My grandfather built it. He ate, ate a few peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the house. Because, <laughs> um, you know, as kids, we just were everywhere, and our parents had no idea where, where we were, and that was perfectly fine back then. Mike mentioned the, uh, the uh, connector project, and uh, if anyone's not aware of what that is, Little Bridge Over Tinker's Creek, it's just going to be awesome. And I tell you, it's going to be 
in the future. That's going to be a legacy for this administration, and uh, it's going to be really a great thing. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> I missed the parade <laughs> around uh, the neighborhood, but uh, I did get to go in some guy's backyard the other day, and he was showing me something, and, and I had never been there, and it was just wonderful to be where, you know, you know, see, you know, places in Bedford because Bedford's fast. It's it's huge. It's uh, 3,500 acres or something. So it's not you don't get an occasion to see it all. It is really beautiful, and uh, and I suppose from what you're telling me, you probably went through Ward Two because he said you saw some really beautiful areas. So it must have been Ward Two. <laughs> some of it was. <laughs> uh, I love Ward Two, of course. I born the racer. Um, I wasn't able to uh, be at the uh, parade because I had the occasion to be in Philadelphia this weekend, and <clears throat> I was uh, I had business reasons for being there. And um, I was just on the side street, and I looked at kind of a worn little old house, townhouse, and there was a sign that said, "This is the house that Thomas Jefferson." wrote the Declaration of Independence. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. And I think it's neat that Bedford has a really connection to history too. But it really dawned on me, and yeah, the fireworks this year were wild. I've never heard so many fireworks in my life. My God, everyone was just going crazy with the fireworks. But it was really something. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it was not what we all wanted to hear late at night, but it was it was really happening. It was really it was really a spectacle, but um, it, it really gave me a chance to reflect on our, our freedoms and, and our, our constitution. We had the uh, in the swearing in ceremony. Uh, we asked that the officer uphold the U.S. Constitution. Uh, each uh, each meeting, we uh, recite the. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, and uh, we at the end we say it with liberty and justice for all, and I think it would uh, behoove all of us to uh, reflect a little bit about our freedoms and, and the weight of our responsibility in terms of uh, great notions of freedom, um, such as the words of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and I think that those are the types of things that should uh, dictate our decision making even in uh, our humble small municipal community of Bedford. End of report. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fluharty. You're right. On last. Everything's been said already. <laughs> or almost last. Paula's last tonight. Um, it's good to piggyback off what uh, Sandy was talking about. Uh, Tony. Tony. I worked with Tony at the high school when she first started. And uh, the whole family, I actually coached her son, Zach, in uh, seventh grade football at Heskett. So I was pretty, and her uh, father-in-law was Bob Thomas, who was a teacher at many years at Moody in high school for anybody that's been in the Bedford school system. So that's the family. Uh, and uh, she, was, uh, she was a gem. So she'll be missed. Uh, so you got me started. I'm sorry. Um, Let's see, what was I going to say? Egbert Road uh, Bridge uh, apron tour to it is done now, uh, Mike. It looked like it was done. It looks good. Yeah, they got to do some markings and things like that with the concrete repairs. And now what we got to do is, of course, get Union Street. That's next, uh, hopefully. Uh, and also, I want to congratulate Savannah. She's a pioneer here in the city for being the first woman. Uh, when I worked at Bedford Heights and as a correctional officer in 95, they had three female officers. And that was a while ago, so that shows you how many years it's been since uh, we broke that barrier here. And uh, congratulations to her. And also, Mike, uh, I don't, you know, they came out and collected my garbage in my neighborhood today. There's going to be a lot of people putting out garbage tonight, thinking they're a day late. They're not, they weren't a day late. So what? what who do we call for what's going to happen? I know I'm going to get phone calls. What we'll, we'll, we'll um, Normally, what we do is anytime there's a delay, we put stuff out there that there is a delay. Um, but there was no delay. Uh, we knew there was a delay. Um, 
you know, that I don't think they're going to come back out for a second pass. They'll probably have to pull the trash in. Uh, I could look into it in the morning and check that, um, but probably have to pull it back. Because since Monday was a lot of people celebrated as a day off, which it was for a lot of people, they just, uh, I think, took for granted. Uh, I mean, I even did it myself, but I see them coming down the street, so I got out right away. But not everybody was home to do that. I, I can <clears> check. <throat> I just, it just was, I, I guarantee you tomorrow is going to be a bad day for that. Um, let's see here, what else did I have? I guess that's it in a report. Thank you. This is Mizek. Welcome everybody. Finally, thank you everybody. And this said it is. Um, Sandy's a tough act to follow because, like myself, we talk from our heart. And to do something, what she did, what she said for this lady. I remember her from the cafeteria too. Um, young woman. I want to say congratulations to the new lady officer for the city at the police department. A uh, long time coming, well deserved. She aced that test and acceptance on her merits and the, the good job she's going to show us that she's going to do. Congratulate the future board members and the other people that are here tonight. Glad we're all back, even though there's not a lot of us. We're good. I went up and down my ward almost every day as much as we could. I want to say thank you for Deborah and Bill. I believe not complete yet with the writing off on that because the curves are still a little bit on the rough side. Back to my attention. Deborah, well, they they patched a few things up there. Yes, was looked into, and I appreciate that. Um, about three weeks ago, we were watching the game in this blare of a siren up, like in front of my house. And I'm thinking, and he's blowing his horn. And usually the guys, when they come down, will toot their horn on their way out to say that they're in my area. But my neighbor on Shawnee, on the side of five, um, had a garage fire. But I want to personally say thank you to every department that was there for mutual aid, make sure that there was no tragedy other than the result of the house not being occupied for a long time to come yet and doing such a great job. Um, it was really an experience to see fire trucks and ladder trucks coming through the back of our streets just come to somebody's aid. You know what? These guys, ladies, put their life on the line. And they did a beautiful job of keeping everybody safe and that fire contained. And um, that little fire on Broadway Sunday afternoon, but it wasn't a she said, but it was a he said. That was, that was burned. I saw it when it happened. They did quite a good job on that response, too. Um, we will be having a lot, a lot of activities, as everybody said. I did want to say that the trains still are holding the people up because I was waiting for delivery today, and the first thing out of the driver's mouth was, what's with the trains in your town? And I says, we're lucky you were only stuck for a half hour. You could have been here a couple weeks ago. It was long. But um, we're working on it, and I hope we do the right thing to... Uh, Make it a little bit safer for our safety vehicles to get through too, and then trains are blocking the tracks because they've had quite a few <coughs> close calls. And um, people don't have patience, and if they realize that we do have a good city, learn to practice a little patience, it'll all clear up when we can get. But I want to wish everybody a healthy year this year. Come on out, we're here. Come on out and see your neighbors. And you know what? I'm glad we're back. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, before we get into new business, I need to have a motion to amend the agenda to include resolution number 2567-21 for county to proceed with the resurface, resurfacing of Union Street. Can I have a motion by Janutis, second by Spinks? 
Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Cochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Luharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. And another good thing about being back together is our law director gets to read these and I don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> ordinance number 9881-21. Amending ordinance number 9881-21 authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Allied Door Systems LLC and declaring an emergency. Again, I have a motion for suspension. Asbury, second by Saunders. Uh, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Luharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Motion for third and final. I have Luharty, second by Spinks. Um, Mike? Thanks, Mayor. This is, uh, we had actually passed the uh, same ordinance uh, last year. This was for improvements to, uh, we did improvements out here to the municipal center and a uh, separate ordinance for the touchless entry, uh, all new door systems. This piece was for uh, si the same, but all new doors, glass, and everything at the Ellenwood Center. Um, at the time, because we were replacing the glass, everything was on a roughly three month delay back order. So we had passed this. End of the year happened. We closed out all of our POs, all of those items. Obviously, it's back. We're doing the work. This is merely to circle back and pass this to reflect the year that we're uh, paying and doing that work. Same price, same company. All of that is the same. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Anudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Nisak? Yes. Ordinance number 9885-21. Amending ordinance number 9494-17 designating Hunt Huntington Bank, U.S. Bank, PNC Bank, and First National Bank for the active funds of the, of the city and Huntington Bank, U.S. Bank, PNC Bank, and First National Bank for the interim funds and declaring an emergency. Declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. I think second by Junudis. Call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Bluehardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Motion for third and final. Asbury, second by Mizak. Uh, Frank? Yes. Uh, every five years, the uh, Higher Advice Code Chapter 135 requires the city with its investments and its uh, contracts with each of the banking institutions to make sure that they follow the Ohio Vice Code, follow our requirements of uh, collateral pledge in the banking system, and uh, what these contracts do is put them on notice to uh, do such. So I ask Council to approve this this evening. These uh, entities are offering their uh, contracts to us and also we've been utilizing their services for uh, the last five years. The last time we did this was 2016. These contracts will run from 2021 to 2026. So I ask Council to pass that this evening. Questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Ordinance number 9886-21. Amending ordinance number 9827-20, making additional appropriations for current expenditures of the city during the year 2021 and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension by Bizak, second by Asbury. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Lombardi? Yes. Bizak? Yes. Motion for third and final by Spinks, second by... Nudis? As uh, usual, Frank. we're going to update our ordinances and our appropriation. Uh, as you know, we have a lot of grants going on. We have a lot of activity going on in the city this year. Uh, we did get the police cameras. We talked about that earlier. So we're going to be appropriating another 57000 for the first year of getting the equipment and so forth. We have uh, economic development uh, grants that we gave out regarding businesses and the school board, uh, paying them in regards to uh, increased jobs and uh, taxes that were collected on that and our agreements with them. 
We also have this evening fire pension. We had a lot of overtime there. We're going to be transferring money to the pension fund so that we can uh, pay those costs, as well as we had some drug law enforcement confiscations uh, with our drug uh, with our own officers, and uh, we have that for $33,625. We have other grants with the, uh, the police and fire. I won't go through all of them, Bulletproof Fest, Food Bank, the donations. Uh, we even have a vaccination grant that we applied for through the Recreation Department. Uh, we have some extra increased refuse fees that we're dealing with in our contracts. And uh, we talked about this evening the Yellowwood doors, which is included in this, and uh, Includes our ordinance. So I ask council again to pass this this evening. These are with all in line with the way we're doing our projects and our expenses that we uh, appropriate as we go. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Ordinance number 9887-21. Authorizing the city manager to accept the proposal of J.D. Striping and Service Incorporated for long line striping of streets in the city and declaring an emergency. A motion for suspension by Saunders, second by Asbury. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Motion for third and final by Sphinx, second by Blue Hardy. Uh, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. This is, uh, we received two quotes for our long line striping throughout town. Uh, the second quote came in at $25,305. Uh, JD striping came in just under that. It's our recommendation. Uh, we move forward with JD striping um, and we pass this as we can get started as soon as possible. And they're the ones that have done this in the past for us. Correct. Call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Rewardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Ordinance number 9888-21. Do we need a motion to amend the amount in the section, section 2, or did we just do because that was corrected. Okay, good, two. good. Uh, good. I didn't get the new copy. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Vandra Brothers Construction, Inc. concerning the 2021 Road Improvement Program and declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension. A flu hardy, second by Sphinx. Call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Newton? Yes. Blue hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Asbury. Dan, can I make a quick comment? Yeah, your questions under. I just want to say that we're going to make one of our oldest residents in oh. the town, who's 99 and a half that lives on Nordham, a very happy man because he's been at every one of our public hearings that we've had to get this street done for years. So he should be very pleased if we take this action tonight. <laughs> yeah. You can mention his name too. Oh, Tom Minardo. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a hundred years old, so in we're glad we in get, January. get this thing done for him. Um, I get my third. Yeah. And Mike. Hi. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mayor. This is a uh, street that I had referenced during the reports. Uh, we were able to, with securing the funding for Union, it freed up dollars uh, to uh, amend our original contract with Vondra Brothers to. Uh, include the alternate bid amount, which was for Nordham. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Space? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance number 9889-21. Amending section 553.01 of our ordinances in the city uh, in declaring an emergency. Motion for suspension by Saunders, second by Mizek. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Anudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizek? Yes. Motion for third and final by Sphinx, second by Blue Hardy. Uh, Mike? 
Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, legislation in regards to um, the parking at the tracks uh, to address the uh, railroads. Um, we're establishing um, obviously a fine, uh, which would be a, a misdemeanor of the first degree with a thousand dollar penalty, uh, as well as an additional um, civil fee of one thousand dollars per violation for the rail line. The first one would be for the uh, conductor. There is um, our law director research this with the uh, fire revised code. Um, we also have to allow for a 30-day grace period upon passage. So we will be sending this uh, legislation certified to the rail line, um, informing them of the potential charges um, that they would be incurring for each time they park at the tracks. And that $1,000 is the maximum right. allowable. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Nudis? Yes. Luvardi? Yes. Nisa? Yes. Resolution number 2567-21. Requesting the county to proceed with the resurfacing of Union Road, the northbound Broadway Road to southbound southbound Broad Broadway Road in the city of Bedford, resolving to pay 100% of the cost for the construction construction supervision of the sanitary and storm sewer repairs, traffic sign updates, multi-use path, and associated work within the city of Bedford. Motion for suspension. Asbury, second by Saunders. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Newton? Yes. Luhardy? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Motion for third and final. By Spinks, second by Fluhardy. Uh, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. This is um, the first piece of legislation that we passed a few months ago regarding union did not reflect uh, the sewer work. Being that we received this money, sorry, that we received the money from issue two and we now want to move forward and do sewer repairs, this basically is informing the uh, Cuyahoga County that we will incur the 100% of those sewer repairs. Um, work as part of the Union Street overall part project. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Luhardy? Yes. Nisa? Yes. H. Oh, yes, sir. Can we get a motion to approve that the or deny the Planning Commission's decision to accept a conditional use approval to Asia Love uh, to use the existing tenant space located at 633 Broadway Avenue to provide makeup and skin care services to clients Wednesday through Saturday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Planning Commission approved that, uh, that uh, use. And I remind you, a yes vote means you agree with the Planning Commission's decision a no vote, you disagree with their decision to approve the uh, conditional use. Sorry? See, that's what it is. And I have a motion for suspension by Asbury, second by Mizak. Call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spink? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Luhardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Motion for third and final. Okay, so Spinks? It's all approved already, but may I? Oh, it is. It's just what, by that. Yeah, okay. All we need is the. Uh, they voted to approve it. Okay. So the, the, I want to do these appointments, so you want me to just read them, one, and then if you want to swear them, after you can do call, instead of getting up and going each time. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do yeah. all four of them. I'll do the them. Read first. them all, and then we'll uh, bring everybody up. Okay. okay. Can we get a motion? To, can someone make a motion to appoint Sotero Williams to the Planning Commission for the four-year term? Uh, four-year term. Yes, for the four-year term. Uh, a Spink second by Fluhardy. Just take a double majority. Majority. All the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. 
Kochi? Yes. Thanks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Lou Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Motion passes. So, so can, can we get a motion to appoint Brian Hood to the Brian, board? Uh, uh, Brian, I'm sorry. We got a little general thing going on my eye here. Uh, Mr. Hood to the board of zoning and uh, zoning appeals for the for a three year term. For the three year term. It's four year term. Four year. Four year. I have, a, I have a motion to accept by Saunders, second by Asbury. Call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Right. Yes. Sink? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Motion passes. That is a four year term. Can we get a motion to reappoint Lynette Spates to the Board of Zoning Appeals for uh, for the four year term? And motion by Isaac, second by Asbury. And call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Pizak? Yes. And lastly, can we get a motion to reappoint Mr. Trezak to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a, th a three year term? Motion for acceptance by Spinks, second by Blue Hardy. Uh, call the roll. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Ochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Miss Williams, could I ask you to come right. forward, please? Good day, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you hear these swearing in? It's good. I hope you can. You're good, go ahead. I state your name. I see Terry Williams. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Charter and Laws of the City of Bedford, Ohio. The Charter and Laws of the City of Bedford, Ohio. And faithfully. And faithfully. Honestly. And honestly. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the position of member of Planning Commission of the City of Bedford. But uh, your, your chairman of the board is sitting in the back there in the black t-shirt. <laughs> so that's tough. who you'll be working with. <laughs> Helen Briggs and you guys can chat after. But uh, again, we, we appreciate citizens stepping forward to fill in these positions. And it's kind of a selfish thing on our part. Otherwise, we'd be meeting seven days a week to do all this stuff. And we rely on citizens to come in, and, and as you saw with the uh, planning commission and getting the uh, the, the uh, ordinance and done, so we thank you ahead of time for, for doing it and, and agreeing to volunteer your time. Well, thank you for your Thank you. Mr. Hood. Same deal. <laughs> then we, we spoke here for a time. I see. I have my Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter and Laws of the City of Bedford. And the Charter and Laws of the City of Bedford. And faithfully. And faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. And impartially. And impartially. Just discharge the duties. Discharge the duties of the position of member of board of zoning and appeals. Of the position of member of zoning appeals for the city of Bedford, Ohio. For the city of Bedford, Ohio. So help me God. So help me God. And again, say the same thing that we do appreciate the board. We have board members sitting here. That 
various boards uh, do a lot of great work for us. And we look forward to having you there. And uh, after we're done here, we'll get you to sign off on these. Okay. You know, what is interesting to me is I was sitting here looking at the, the oath you take is the exact same oath that the police officer did. Okay. Yeah. Wow, think about the, the meaning that goes behind what, what you're doing. And it is important that you guys do these kind of things and, and the deliberations you get into. Uh, I, th I think that's very powerful. And again, we appreciate you guys for stepping forward. Thank you so much. Forward and see you. Okay, then uh, we finally get to hearing of citizens. If anybody has anything to say, please come forward, state your name, your address, and your comment. Good evening. My name is Robert Belkovic, 154 Paul Street, Bedford, Ohio. Excuse my voice. <coughs> If you could pull that microphone down, that's good. I just wanted to touch on what you guys already did, Sandy did, they did over here with the speeding. I live up what they call the hill, Fall Street, John Street, Best Street. Mr. Flew already lives in the same area. Yep. It's the Indy 500 up there. Stop signs they don't believe in. They've been stuck in my yard four times to live on the curve. I mean, it's, somebody's going to get hurt up there. The other day we had a party uh, on the 27th. It was a Sunday, I believe. People parking on the, if you're going up the street, they were parked on the left-hand side. Now when we have called and ask the police department about various things. We're always in our neighborhood, this, that, and whatever. And the pictures I have on my phone, police presence is not up there. If it is, they go up Union, across Forbes, and that, and go down Northfield. Paul Street, zero. I think I've seen three today. Then they argue with me, I can't see them. Sorry, I do. I'm in a cat bird seat. I can see all the way to Ford where I'm at. I have a good view. You can ask Vic. I'm not, I'm not here just to blow smoke. Then they say, why didn't you call on these people that were parked on the street? If you're always in a neighborhood, why should I have to call? They started parking at 5 o'clock in the evening. My last picture was at 1038. They were still parked there. I had the pictures on my phone. The last car that was in line was there that morning. Didn't even have a ticket on it. The guy come from around the corner, got in his truck, and he left. No police presence. I'm getting tired of getting smoke. I want some action before somebody gets hurt. We'll, we'll we got to. we got Doherty up there running Ford's Road. We have that new automotive shop by the Cotman's that runs up Northfield and around and come down Paul Street because there's no stop signs. They had to put it down through there. I mean, it's ridiculous. Somebody's going to get hurt or killed, and I don't want to see that. I have grandkids too. I, I don't like being told that they're there and they're not. I'm not here complaining just to compl they're not in the area. Hey, you can sit there and say they are. I disagree. Sorry. I appreciate your comments, and I know that the city manager's already written it down to talk to the I chief. Will, I will be more than happy to come in and have a meeting with somebody yeah. and show them what I have. So they do believe me. Oh, I think they believe you. It, 
and I'm not making excuses, but as somebody stated earlier, it, this is just happening all over town. It uh, is. It is. I'm not saying. And people in general are not taking re responsibility for themselves. No, if you, if you go out of Bedford, you go to Northfield, you go to Walton Hills, you go to Oakwood, you go anywhere. You're not going to do that. I'm sorry. You're going to do. You're going to do the speed limit or less because you know you're going to get nailed. I myself have done it. Northfield Road 35. Hell, I'm going 50 55. I know nothing's going to happen. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to lie. You just don't. You, you just don't get it in Bedford. That's, yeah. I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Oh, neither do we. Do like I said, I've had four cars in my front yard. Because I was right by Justin, he come right down Fall Street, right in my front yard, where it's like, yeah, right in my area, front yard. Yeah. So I just, it's up to you guys to do the best you can. Yeah, we'll, somebody, somebody has to do something. We we will pass the word along. That's for somebody. Sure. Has, now we complained about this years ago, <laughs> and I mean, I don't see anything getting done. <laughs> I know Viv complained about it many a times. Yeah. I spoke to, to Councilman Flew Hardy. Uh, I know you spoke to, I think it was the Penn and Kellerman. Um, oh, that didn't go, that just didn't go right. I apologize for that. Well, I, no, no, I, I am familiar with it. And he shared some of the data with me. I, I know that, um, and I don't think he's, obviously there's, there's speed. We know there's speed. Yeah, well, um, like I said, well, I, I don't want to not, um, not you know, we know that happens, we know, I said it at the beginning, we're looking at yeah. the things that we can do, um, and I know you may not want to hear it, but I, I do want to make a point, you know, there was, um, up until last Friday, over 10 days, I think we issued, it was either, I'd have to check my report, so don't quote me on it, it was either 34 or 44 night parking tickets, I think five of them were on Paul Street. So they have issued some tickets. Well, like I like I said, I'm not saying they they, they, they may not. I'm not saying they got all of them. But, no. But they are. We're, we're trying to address some of those issues. Now, I don't know as far as an overnight parking. I don't know legally parked. Obviously, yeah. on the wrong side of the road. But and I tell this to people often. We do do. If someone calls in and says, "Listen, I'm having some friends over." Can I have permission for overnight parking? Or you get your driveway worked on or something? Oh, can I park on the street? Yeah. Right. yeah. Like I had someone call me and said, "This is ridiculous. They've been parked on the street for two days. How are you getting their driveway redone?" Or another one had two relatives who were out of town, so they don't see that. And I'm not saying not, not on Paul Street. This was in another area of town. The neighbor doesn't see that and was like, "Well, how dare the PD not ticket them? It was two days." Well, they got someone in from Wyoming, and they asked for permission, and we grabbed that. We try to work with, and I, and I know, you know, there's some issues that, you know, the speeding, we have to do, we, we have to work to curtail that. I, I'm not disagreeing you, with that. You've only got so many people out there in, in the city doing this job. You can't be everywhere at once. I realize that. I'm not condoning you for, you know, you got to be here. To, no, that, it don't work like that. But at least once an hour, come up the street, something. Have these guys get a zone where at 8 o'clock at night, they better be heading up that area. 9.30 at night, be heading up that area so somebody can see them. That's all we ask. We realize there's 10,000 things going on between, besides our little stinky street there. Oh, you know. streets are important. I think our, and, our, and our officers, they know that. I, mean, I know, but like I said, there's so many other things going on. Right. And they can't be everywhere at once. Right, and that's the challenge. I, I would love to say, hey, at 8 o'clock this time, this time, we're here, here. That would, in a perfect world, absolutely. You know, we get an accident and we got two people responding here. <coughs> we're chasing someone here or two people here. Oh, yeah, if you got an accident on 271, you got one on uh, the other end of Broadway. You know, that's... that's Understandable, we'll, we'll, we'll look but through. not to see anything for days. I mean, come on. Like I said, if they're coming through me, they're going out this way and around, and not even coming this way. So, 
That's all we ask. Thank you. I appreciate okay, it. Have a good evening. Stan, may I comment? This is a suggestion that actually Dick Fluharty and myself and Mike's checking into it is there's some cities around that um, they have removable speed bumps because we had talked for several years about the speed bumps. Well, the thing with the speed bumps, with our winters, there's no way. With our snow plows, the, the speed bumps would just be, it would be something for the snow plows to just pull, just plow up like some of our curbs and stuff. So we've been discussing this, and I know, Mike, did you get any, I know our chief is looking into it because, like you said, we have, we're not like Northfield, we're not like, Glen Willow where there's just one main thorough or they can kind of you know be there and catch it where we have all these side streets and of course like where I live Grand being a, a big from getting from Rockside Center Road to Broadway it's like it's well, non-stop like but said, yeah they do it your area yeah I mean so it's not just me and, and, and three yeah it's all over so but we are okay, looking so at how do you, yeah how do you care? Well, that's how we're looking into it because if we could do something like that, the, the portable speed bump you lay down in the spring, you have to fall. Yeah, right? yeah. So it just has to be a thing. Well, is there grants out there? You know, how expensive? But that would let somebody go 75 okay. miles an hour over a speed bump and they won't do it again. So you know that could be something, but it 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 doesn't happen overnight and. Mike, I hope that Chief is looking into it because we've got to do something. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? Hello, Council. My name is Austin Reed uh, from 764 Wellman Street, Bedford. Uh, thank you, Wally, for the welcome to the city. Um, I think Bedford is up on the way up. Um, it's nice to see everyone back here. It's nice to hear from the citizen. Um, but I think hopefully uh, Bedford can become a, a destination. I think the connector project will work with that. I think all the events this month, uh, the ones that we've been doing, great thing for the city. Um, so. That's just what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. You're welcome to our city. Anyone else? Seeing none, can I have a motion for adjournment? By Asbury, second by Saunders. Clerk, call the roll, please. Asbury? Yes. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Sphinx? Yes. Nudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Pizak? Yes. Thank you all for coming. Yeah.